Good day, Junior Tickies. I'm Mrs. Brimacombe. We're going to look now at the November 2019 Accounting Paper 2. Question 1. Is 40 marks 32 minutes? Again, make sure that you stick to the time allocated per question. This question is on manufacturing and the focus is on concepts, ledger counts, calculations, off cost, break-even point and internal control. So question 1.1 is for concepts. Match the description provided by choosing the correct answer from the list provided below. Write only the answer next to the question number. This is easy marks to get. Make sure that you understand your theory. It is important that you study it. Understand the terminology. If we look at 1.1.1, Salaries paid to workers involved in the production, that is direct labour cost. If they are directly involved in the process of making, it goes to direct labour cost. The cost of raw materials used in the production process, that is direct material cost. It's cost directly involved in the process of making. Advertising expense. All expenses must be closed off to a cost account. So advertising will form part of the selling and distribution cost. It will never form part of your factory and administration cost. Make sure that you understand that. The salary, sorry, number four, rent paid for office buildings. They specifically spoke about office buildings. If it's office buildings, it is administration cost. Salary paid. To the factory foreman, the factory foreman works in the factory but is not directly involved in the process of making. Therefore, this will form part of your factory overhead cost. So again, make sure that you study your theory, know the terminology, know all your expenses, under which cost account will it fall under. Question 1.2, ledger accounts and cost calculations. So wishy-washy manufacturers. The business produces washing machines and sells at a markup of 70% on cost. They use the perpetual inventory system for finished goods and the periodic inventory system for raw materials and indirect materials. Understand the difference between perpetual and periodic inventory system. Required, prepare the raw material stock account and 1.2.2, provide workings for direct labor and factory overhead cost. Do not forget when we look at the cycle in manufacturing, the accounting cycle, we have to record the transactions. After we've recorded the transactions, we do adjustments and after we've done adjustments, it means that all our expense accounts, in this case, is closed off to a specific cost account. They provided us with the opening balances on the 1st of March 2018 and the closing balances on 28 February 2019. Transactions for the year. So when we look at this question, we're going to do question 1.2.1, 1.2.2 at the same time. We look at the information which was given to us and we fill in where it's supposed to go. Starting with the raw material stock, the balance brought down was given to us 95,000. Be careful not to swap the balances around. This is my opening balances and these are my closing balances. The opening balance was given and the closing balance. So immediately we're going to say raw material stock. The balance brought down at the end of this year, which will be the opening balance in the next financial year. Balance brought down means balance carried down 110,500. Again, fill in the information which you've got. Now you should realize that most likely your raw materials issued will be the balancing figure. But first, let's now have a look. 
factory indirect material stock. This is the opening balance must always be added and the closing balance must be subtracted. So we're going to fill it in immediately so that you do not forget about it. Transaction number one, raw materials purchased on credit, 521,000. This is a stock account. So if we buy raw materials, it means our stock will increase. February 2019 on the 28th, our details is creditors control in the creditors journal, 521,000. Transaction number two, Cost of transporting raw materials to the factory amounted to 29500 paid in cash. This must be added to the raw material stock account. So bank, CPJ, and the total, 29500 You do not need to write the date again. Third transaction. Indirect materials bought for cash, 77,500. Indirect materials forms part of your factory overhead cost. Now this must be added to the factory indirect materials. Transaction number four, wages paid to workers amount, amounted to 300,800. The amount includes the employer's contribution in respect of pension fund of 28,000. Always remember with salaries and wages, it will always consist out of the cross plus the contributions. Anything that is deducted will go to the fund account. The net salary is a liability of a net wage, which means it does not form part of your expense account. So when we're looking at salaries and wages, we're always looking for direct labor cost and for indirect labor cost. It is your cross plus for contributions. So the provided the total amount is 300,800. This consists out of 28,000 for pension fund contribution. So if we want to know what was the wage, take the difference from 300,800 minus 28,000, that equals 272,800. Salary paid to the factory foreman was 105,000. This is an indirect cost, so it goes to your factory overhead cost, 105,000. Number six, commission paid to sales staff, 90,000. This does not go anywhere in the factory overhead cost or direct labor cost. Commission paid to sales staff forms part of your selling and distribution cost. So it should be excluded, do not include it. Then number seven, maintenance of factory equipment paid, 37,000. A further 11,000 is still owed. So we need to look at what is our total expense plus the amount which is still outstanding. It forms part of our expense for this accounting period. So maintenance is 37,000 plus 11,000. Number eight, water and electricity paid, 21,000. The amount is split between the factory and the office. The ratio of factory to office is four to one. So we only care about what is our factory overhead cost. What forms part of our factory cost? So 21,000 was paid. Four divided by five, we need to add those two together. Means that is the amount that goes into the factory overhead cost, 16,800. Number nine, rent paid amount to 108,000. The factory is responsible to pay 80% of the rent. This means that the rent, we're going to take 108,000 times 80%. And that is our total expense for factory overhead cost. Number 10, 
Depreciation on factory equipment amounts to 60500 Depreciation is an expense which is closed off to the factory overhead cost. There were no calculation involved. Now, before we continue finishing these two questions, when they say to you purchased equipment, that is an asset. It's not an expense. It doesn't go to the cost account. But the depreciation that we need to calculate on that asset will form part of a cost account. And if it's used in the factory, it will go to your factory overhead cost. Please make sure that you understand that. We've looked now at all the transactions. So now we can close off 1.2.1 and total 1.2.2. So starting with 1.2.1, what becomes now the missing figure is my raw materials which was issued. If we take the debit side and we minus the credit side, that becomes the balancing figure. My raw materials issued would have been debited. That is an expense to the business. That is then closed off to a cost account and this will form part of your direct material cost. So basically your raw materials issued is your direct material cost. Direct labor cost was 300,800. Our total factory indirect materials, 80,000. Do not forget, we tend to forget the consumables on hand. In this case, the indirect materials on hand. Whatever was left over at the end of last year must be added. Then this is what we've purchased this year. Whatever is left over at the end of this year must be subtracted. And that equals our total indirect material cost. Factory foreman, there were no calculation. Maintenance is 48,000. Now we can total our total factory overhead cost. Now the next part which I'm going to explain did not form part of the questions required. But I think it's just important to revise that. You need to remember that in manufacturing, there are four cost accounts. We've got the raw material stock. What do we calculate in the raw material stock? The raw materials issued. Work in process stock account. And what do we calculate in the work in process stock account? The cost of finished goods produced. Then we've got the finished goods stock account, which means our finished goods. What do we calculate in there? Our cost of sales. And then the fourth stock account was our factory indirect material stock or consumables on hand is sometimes used as well. So if we want to calculate now the total cost of finished goods produced, we need to open up the work in process stock account and we start with the opening balance, 71,500. Your direct material cost, direct labor cost and your factory overhead cost is always closed off to the work in process stock account. They provided us now with the balance at the end, which was 191,600. So the balancing figure becomes now the cost of finished goods produced, which is taken to the finished goods stock account. We start with the opening balance, 480,000, plus the cost of finished goods that we've produced, which was calculated in your working process, then they provided you with the balance at the end, 96,200. So the balancing figure becomes my cost of sales. Be aware that they could have made this a little bit more complicated. They could have had where they provided you with the total sales. They provide you with the markup percentage, which means then we need to use the markup percentage on cost by taking the sales. We calculate our cost of sales, 
then this can become the balancing figure, the cost of finished goods produced this year. For every debit, there's a credit, and then we have to calculate the balance at the end. Again, this wasn't part of the question required. It's just for explanation purpose, what you can expect in an exam. Question 1.3, unit cost calculations. This is a separate question from 1.2. Make sure that you use the correct information. Crossroad, table manufacturers. You are provided with the information relating to Crossroad, table manufacturers, for the year ended 28 February 2019. The factory manufacturers manufactures wooden catering tables. Required, calculate the direct material cost per unit. Calculate the break-even point for the year ended 28 February 2019. Should the business be satisfied with the number of units manufactured during 2019? Explain by quoting relevant information and calculations. Then, the direct material cost per unit was 152 in 2018. Explain two reasons for the differences in the cost over the two financial years. They could have just as easily asked you about the direct labor cost as well, if you look at the information which was given. Or they could have provided you with the factory overhead cost. They could ask you, any of the five cost accounts where you need to analyze that. A reminder, what is my five cost accounts? Direct material cost, direct labor cost, factory overhead cost, selling and distribution cost, and your administration cost. Those five cost accounts is sorted into your variable cost and your fixed cost. Make sure that you know that your variable cost will always consist out of your selling and distribution cost, direct material cost, direct labor cost. Your total fixed cost is your factory overhead cost and your administration cost. Again, these are basics that you need to make sure that you understand and study them. They provided you with additional information the business produced and sold 4,320 tables during the year. There, were no, there was no work in progress at the beginning or the end of the financial year. Just so that you understand what do they mean by that. If there's no work in progress at the beginning or end of the financial year, it means your total manufacturing cost is basically equal to the cost of finished goods produced. If I take this question now, or this stock account as an example, work in process, direct material plus direct labor plus your factory overhead cost equals your total manufacturing cost. If we add the opening balance and we subtract the closing balance, the cost of finished goods produced will be different. So no opening balance, no closing balance, then this means the total manufacturing cost is the same than the finished goods stock or the cost of finished goods produced. This is just to make better sense of what they are actually saying. Question 1.3.1. Calculate the direct material cost per unit. To calculate the cost per unit, we're going to take the total direct material cost divided by the number of units produced and sold, 4,320. So my direct material cost is equal to 178. Question 1.3.2. Calculate the break-even point. Please remember with the break-even point. It's always your total fixed cost divided by the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. Selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit is called my contribution per unit. So to take my total fixed cost, we have to take 518,400 divided by the selling price per unit, 400, minus the variable cost per unit, 245. 
So my contribution per unit is equal to 155. To get the break-even point, take the total fixed cost divided by 155. That equals 3,344,5 units, which is equal to 3,345 units or tables. Your answer must be in units or table. If you're going to put a rand value there, it's going to be wrong. 1.3.3 Should the business be satisfied with the number of units manufactured during 2019? Explain by quoting relevant figures. So when we're commenting now, we always compare the break-even point with last year. But now they didn't provide you with last year's figures. We compare the number of units produced and sold, which they didn't provide me with. What we do have is we've got the break-even point for this year and we've got the number of units produced and sold for the current year. So we need to compare those two to see are we breaking even? Are we covering our cost? Are we making a profit or are we making a loss? So if I compare those two, should the business be satisfied? Yes. The number of units produced is 4,000 produced and sold is 4,320 units, which is more than the break-even point of 3,345 units. This means that the business is making a profit of 975 units. Question 1.3.4. The direct material cost per unit was 152 in 2018. Explain two reasons for the difference in the cost over the two financial years. So if I compare the cost, 178 minus 152 divided by 152 times 100 means that my cost increased by 17,1%. When we're looking for reason for differences, think about what does your direct material cost consist out of? What is it all about? It goes about the raw materials. So if we're looking for reasons, there could have been an increase in price of raw materials from the suppliers. Waste of material by workers who are not properly trained or supervised. Poor control over raw material stock. Those expose the stock to risk of theft. Increase in transport cost. So these are all possible reasons where, why there was a 17,1% increase in our direct material cost. So if it happens that there was actually a decrease in your direct material cost, Think about the same reasons why there's an increase and then just write an opposite. In other words, a decrease in the raw materials from our suppliers. We could have found a cheaper supplier, local supplier, with exactly the same quality. It's not inferior, but it's cheaper. Less wastage of workers. Better control over raw material stock which eliminates or decrease the possibility of theft. Decrease in tra transport cost. So just think about the opposite. If it were that there was actually a decrease in the direct material cost from last year to this year. This is now not part of this question, but what is important to understand with regards to factory overhead cost? Let's say your factory overhead cost increase the total factory overhead cost, but yet the factory overhead cost per unit, there was a decrease. Understand that this is what we call economies of scales. It could be, or it is because more units were produced this year, and that's why the factory overhead cost per unit actually went down. So make sure that you understand economies of scales when we're talking about factory overhead cost. Your total factory overhead cost could have increased 
from last year to this year, but yet the number of units or the factory overhead costs per unit decreased. That's because more units were produced. And this is, again, what we call economies of scales. Now, another thing that I want to point out with regards to the break-even point. Again, this wasn't part of this question, but it's important to understand. They could possibly ask you, calculate the number of extra tables that must be produced and sell to make an additional profit of 50,000. So they could ask you this question by saying, what is the number of extra units? Or they could have rephrased this question and say, but what is the total? tables that should now be produced in order to make that additional profit of 30,000. So when we're just looking at this question now, which they are asking, there are different ways in which we can get to exactly the same answer. But what I do is I simply take the additional profit, which is 30,000, and we divide it by the contribution per unit, which is the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. This means that 193,5 tables, if we round it up, 194 tables must be produced extra to make an additional profit of 50,000. Make sure that you understand this way of asking the break-even point as well. Then another thing, if you look at the break-even point, any of these could become your X, your missing figure, that you will need to calculate. So when practicing the break-even point, know or practice finding, for example, the selling price per unit, finding the total fixed cost. Thank you very much. Next, we're going to look at question two. Have a wonderful day.